Let me give you an understanding of how a Negro became into being. If we go back to 1619, and you get the first slave ships to come over here, there are certain restrictions that are being placed upon you, specifically as black males. Your language is gone, your religion is gone, your name is gone, your culture is gone, your marital traditions are gone, your burial traditions are gone. Now, it's one thing to take those things away, but it's another thing if I replace it with something else. I give you another name, <clears throat> I, re I make it a law that you cannot read, I make it a law that I do not want you ever to speak any of your languages. You can't speak Arabic, you can't speak Wuluf, you can't speak Yoruba. If I catch you, I beat you. If I catch you trying to rename your offspring a name that fits in with your language or culture, I beat you. You must wear Johnson, Jones, Smith. You must speak English. You must have babies only with that woman. And when you have a baby with that woman, <clears throat> that is not your son first. He's my slave first, and he's your son second. So once I do that, then I've turned you into not a human being, but something subpar, and I will give you the title of Negro. And I will not only give it to you, but I'll make sure that you call each other Negro. I will make sure that you call each other nigger. I will make sure that the woman that you call your mother will have five other babies, possibly by other men. And I will make sure that those are not family to you, but they are capital to me as slave owner first. I am going to make you be so docile to me. You will have a Bo Jackson, Mike Tyson body, but you will have a third grade mind because I am inventing another race and I'm going to call that race Negro. And that's going to go on from 1619 to 1719. And I'm going to produce a whole bunch of generations that are going to think just the way I want them to. And once I get you tuned up real nice, once I get you tuned up real nice, I don't have to beat you anymore because you're going to do my work for me. Because the next time that you have a son, you're going to raise him the same way that I raised you. And you're going to call him Johnson. You're going to call him Tommy Jackson. You're going to make sure he speaks English and English only. You understand? You're not going to have any assertiveness. So, because I have reduced you to chattel, I have reduced you to a chicken, a hog, a, a, a cow, a horse. See, I, I also breed horses. So I've got a stallion. I've got a mare over here. And I breed those horses. I take those horse offspring, I take the cow offspring or cat, and I'll sell it down the street. Likewise, I do the same to you. So much so that you're not human. So that's going to go on for another hundred years. So now we're in 1819. Your people have been Negroes for 200 years because it's only 1819. So now that it's 1819, I've, I've been dead probably 120 years. But see, my great-grandchild is the, going to be the beneficiary of me creating a company. And that company, you know, whenever you have a person, you know, that, that makes, a, makes any commodity, this case, this table, the clothes that you wear, the hat, the socks, your drawers you got on. That's a company that makes that. So I may own Food and Loom, right? So I take that company and I pass it on down to my son. And he has 200 workers, 2,000 workers. He passes it on down to his son. That's my grandson. So my grandson stands up and he says, yeah, my, great, my grandfather started this company. Food and Loom, Nike, whatever company it is. And all the people that work for that company are his employees. Because we are producing a commodity. Underwear, drawers, socks, shoes, cigarettes that you smoke, uh, alcohol that you drink, whatever it is. It's a commodity, it's a, it's, a, it's a product. Well, you are a product too. Because you are Negroes. You Negroes, you are a product too. So you were passed down as the commodity 
to the great grandchild children of the slave owner. So 250 years later, that's why you guys call each other my nigga. Okay, so 1865 comes along <clears throat> and slaves are free. Now remember, you never looked at yourself as an equal man. You know, the definition, part of the definition of a man is that, you know, he does for himself. Part of the definition of a man at a certain point, you no longer suck on your mother's breast. At some point, you wean off the breast and you are able to provide yourself with food, clothing, shelter, transportation, independent of your mama, independent of your daddy. See, that's what man means. Okay, but if you don't have the confidence and the assertiveness within you, then you will always be dependent. You know, I used to have a Rottweiler. I like dogs, right? I had a Rottweiler a couple years ago. And you know that that dog, when the fence would open in the middle of the night, you know what he'd do? He'd run out, he'd run out, run out, and he'd come back, and he'd sit right back on the porch. <laughs> he'd sit right back on the porch. And when he'd get back on the porch, my neighbor would call me and say, Sheree, <coughs> Chief is out. Chief was my dog's name. I said, yeah, yeah, I know. I look out the window, and he'd be right there on the porch. He's free to go. He's free to go. He has the strength of a rock while he's 125 pounds. He can go out there and kill a bird, a rabbit, whatever, right? Been for itself. But I'm his master. So when that gate opened up, he went out and he came right back in because he knew that I was going to feed him. And the only time he was to eat was when I fed him because he's my dog. He's an animal. He's trained. The Negro was trained too. He was trained too. He was trained to be exactly what he is today. You know, the Emancipation Proclamation freed you from physical bondage. That is to say that you did not have to. You were not made to work physically in a plantation any longer. You guys understand that? That means you didn't, I didn't make you pick cotton. I did not make you pick tomatoes. I did not make you pick tobacco. But you were free to go. So all these people that they called Negroes jumped up off the plantation and shot out. They got 10 blocks down the road and said, what are we going to do now? They can't read, can't write, where are we going? So they had to go right back to the same person that had enslaved them and asked that person to create a system to take care of them. See, because they're not equal in productivity. Because emancipation comes when you have rehabilitated your ignorance. See, you were bred to be stupid. You were bred to say, that's my nigga. You were bred to, to, to not be at the head of your household. She was, Laquisha was bred to have four kids and all of them have different daddies. But that's what she was doing on the plantation. Yeah, you guys know them. You guys know girls about 25, 30 years old, and they'll tell you, well, his daddy is Johnny, his daddy is Larry, his daddy is Trayvon, his daddy is Tyrone, right? All of them got different daddies. That's where that thing, my baby daddy, that's where that come from, because that's what she was doing on the plantation, because you were a commodity. And all you guys are doing, running around, they're just making babies. So your dignity, you were an animal. That's what animals do. You ever see a dog breed? You ever see a horse? They bring the horse in, they say, screw that horse, screw that horse, screw that horse, and screw that horse. Because that horse is an animal, but that's what you were. So 250 years later, this thing that you called a Negro, he still does these behavior traits. And the biggest enemy that you face right now is yourself. The fact that you are addicted to anti-survival behavior. What do I mean by anti-survival behavior? You ever seen a, you guys know what a, a, a wildebeest is on the, on the prairie? You guys know what a gazelle is on the prairie? All right, if you walked up down the, if we all right now were sitting on the African prairie and we saw a gazelle, a female gazelle, and she had a calf. And she took that calf over to the lion and said, look here, lion, I want you to, uh, keep messing up my microphone here, I want you to go down to, I want you to, Mr. Lyon, what I want you to do is I want you to keep my calf for a couple of weeks. Ah, she's only about two weeks old. I want you to keep my calf for a couple of weeks. 
and I want you to teach my calf how to survive out here on the prairie. That's what I want you to do. I want you to teach him how to survive on the prairie, right? What would you think about that calf, that, that, that mama gazelle? You think she lost her mind? What would you think about a wildebeest who took her offspring over to the hyena? You would say that wildebeest has lost her mind. Why would she do something like that? Well, because you said that would be anti her own survival. Does the mouse take her offspring and sit it next to the cat? No. Well, let me ask you something. How come this person that is called a Negro, why would he engage in the same type of anti-survival behavior? Why would he take and smoke weed all day long? If you went to the gas station, you put gas in your car so it'll run. You, put, you change the oil so that the, 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 the engine will run properly. You wouldn't put sugar in your gas tank. If your father let you use his truck to go do some place, and he said, well, put some, go to the gas station. And you went to the gas station, and you got a big bottle of 40 ounce old English and put it in the gas tank. Your father knocked you, he'd knock your head off. He said, boy, what the hell is wrong with you? Is, you? is something wrong with you? You said, well, I put some beer in the gas tank. He said, what you do that for? That's going to mess the car up. See, that wouldn't cross your mind. But it does cross your mind to put that same kind of poison in your mind and in your body. That's part of your slave training. Because you are addicted to anti-survival behavior. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Do you understand? This is not a game. Do you really understand what I'm trying to say? We're equal. I am a man. You see all these slogans. That's nice, right? I am somebody. Right? You all these nice slogans. That sounds real good. You put it in a rap song, right? You are not equal until you can do for yourself what every other man on this earth can do for himself. If you lagging behind and you lack skills, the first thing you do is look at yourself and say, well, I'm coming up short. Well, you got a lot of people who benefit off of your ignorance. You got a lot of people who benefit off of your bad behavior. There's a lot of people who benefit off of the fact that you daily engage in anti-survival behavior. It is your job, each and every one of you, it is your job to acquire as many intellectual skills as you possibly can. You are to perfect your writing skills. You are to perfect your analytical skills. You are to perfect your ability to think out of any and every situation. You are to perfect mastery over your body. And you do not give your mind to anything other than your own survival and productivity. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. You guys understand that? That's your job. That's your job. 